women were being raped. If God did not intervene when Africans were being snatched from Africa, if God did not intervene when white male slave owners were practicing pedophilia on black children in slavery, if God didn't intervene when black men and women were being hung and babies cut out of our sister's stomach, if God didn't intervene when the penises were castrated and the toes cut off and the slave master's name branded in your flesh, if God didn't intervene then, guess what? Why in the hell would God intervene now when those very same people have a billion dollar, excuse me, a trillion dollar economy that they don't want to put to use to benefit their children? If God didn't intervene in slavery, God damn sure ain't going to intervene in the 21st century Holocaust. You on your own, and you will not get any divine assistance until you begin to give yourself your own assistance because God only helps those who helps themselves. We went through two and a half centuries of that slavery. We've been going through four and four centuries of white supremacy. God ain't coming. I'm saying this to say we have to stop relying on supreme divine intervention to solve our problems when we have the ability to solve those problems ourselves. Let me say it again. We have to stop relying on supreme divine intervention to solve our problems when we have the ability to solve them ourselves. Can I give you some examples? Let's take the school system. God Please fix the schools. Make the schools better for our children. God is not going to answer that because the science of prayer dictates. The science of prayer dictates God only intervenes and supplies you when you don't have the resources to supply yourself. So because black people have the resources to build your own schools for your own children, God is not going to fix the schools because you have the ability to fix them yourselves. You only pray for that which is beyond your power to do. Harriet Tubman prayed, but she only prayed for things that were beyond her power to do. Queen Mother Harriet Tubman knew that it was within her ability to help rescue Africans, so she did not pray for Africans to be rescued. She did it herself. But what she did pray for was for God to give her protection while she was saving black folks because she could not protect herself while she was on the Underground Railroad. That's Frederick right. Frederick Douglass didn't pray for freedom. What did he say? He said, I... Hello, somebody. This message needs to get to Oyeripo, Adeboye, Olukoya, at the Farasin, Ashimilowo, what's the names out there? Suleiman, Okafa, all those witch doctors who are masquerading in the shrines that they call church, all those witch doctors that are masquerading as pastor and apostle and bishop. This message is for them and for the sheep because they are preaching that all you got to do is come to church for five days a week and fast for 50 days and pray, and you'll get your miracle job, you'll get your miracle husband, you'll get your miracle baby. They shouldn't even have sex. All those married couple who are believing God for miracle babies, you shouldn't even go to your bedroom and have sex. Since you want to believe in miracle baby, just take Bishop Oyedepo, uh, uh anointed prayer mantle, just lay on your stomach. The baby will just jump into your stomach. I mean, you don't have to, your husband don't have to touch you. But you, that's it. But you, after you pray to your bishop for your miracle baby, he gave you his so-called anointed prayer mantle, meaning his witchcraft cloth. He gave it to you. And the anointing oil, you drink it, you rub it all over yourself as lotion, isn't it? What do you do after that? You still go to bed and have sex with your husband, right? You shouldn't do that. Why are you doing that? Why are you having a physical uh, interaction with your husband? Let the anointing oil and the prayer mantle just make you pregnant. So if you have the sense to know that, in addition to your prayer mantle and your anointing oil and your bishop laying hand on you, in addition for you to get pregnant, you have to do something physical, which is to have sex with your husband, correct? So why can't you use the same mindset after your bishop have prayed for you and you have the prayer mantle, you have the anointing oil? Why can't you go and look for a job? No, you will sit down with your lazy butt five days a week in the church and the job will come to you, right?
but you don't get pregnant that way. This message is for Oyedipo and Adeboye and all those witch doctors in Nigeria. This message is for you guys. Because you have brainwashed your people to think that they can do nothing for themselves. They are helpless and all they have to do is pray and fast for 50 days and give their one month salary. And somehow, miraculously, it's a miracle job will find its way to them. Their miracle husband, their miracle spouse, their miracle baby. All kinds of miracle madness. So, you're the poor. I did you. You witch doctors in Africa, Nigeria, all over the world. Your time is up. This season has come for the veil to be removed from the people of God's eyes. And God is raising up some radical breeze all over the world to let you know. God cannot help you if you sit down and fold your arms. God said in his words, I have given you all you need for life and godliness. So if God has given you all you need, why do you still need a prayer mantle? Why do you need a, a, an anointing oil from Bishop? Why do you need Bishop prayer mantle to put on your head, to put on your face, to put on your resume? Why do you need anointing oil to rub somewhere? If God has given you all you need for life and godliness, you are telling God what he has given you, what he has deposited inside of you is not good enough until Bishop anoints it. Don't you see how that is idolatry? Don't you see how that is idol worshiping? Don't you see how that is even insulting and offensive to God? And because you refuse to listen to God, he leaves you to your reprobate mind and allow you to be milk and bamboozle and bushwhack and deceived and manipulated and seduced and robbed by these liars and deceivers and merchants and hirelings and witch doctors who are masquerading as men of God. He leaves you to them because what you want. Then you will have the audacity and the stupidity to come to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page and telling me you cursing me and I will die in three days and the wrath of God will visit me. Really? Are you serious? Don't you know God doesn't answer the prayer of a witch? Those are witchcraft prayers. Please, if you don't wake up, you deserve to be robbed and milk penniless. You deserve to lick the dust off Oyedipo's shoes. And I bet you if he tells you to lick the dust off his heel so you can get a miracle job, you'll be dumb enough to believe that. If he tells you to kiss his feet and lick the dust off his heel, you are stupid enough to believe that. That's why God left you to your reprobate mind. Please wake up in Jesus' name. This is stupidity and it's insult. To do. Harriet Tubman prayed. But she only prayed for things that were beyond her power to do. Queen Mother Harriet Tubman knew that it was within her ability to help rescue Africans. So she did not pray for Africans to be rescued. She did it herself. Yes. But what she did pray for was for God to give her protection yes. while she was saving black folks because she could not protect herself while she was on the Underground Railroad. Frederick Douglass didn't pray for freedom. What did he say? He said, I prayed for 20 years. Frederick Douglass, who we remember yesterday, his Earth Day yesterday, said, I prayed for 20 years, but God didn't answer me. These are the words of Frederick Douglass. I prayed for 20 years, but God did not answer me until I start praying with my what? Until I start praying with my what? Frederick said, God didn't answer me until I started praying with my feet, with my feet. Facts. Frederick said, I prayed for 20 years on my knees, but God did not help me until I got up off my knees and started praying with my feet. Facts. So God ain't coming to help black folks. Jesus ain't coming. Nobody's coming for you because you only get divine help when you help yourself. That's less. Is this brother teaching the truth or what? This is the message Oyedipo needs to hear. This Adeboye, Ulukoya, all those witch doctors who call themselves pastors in, in Africa. This message is really for them because they have been, they have brainwashed the people and told them the complete opposite. Just pray and sit down. Your miracle job, your miracle house, your miracle car, your miracle children. No, God doesn't hear the prayer of a lazy man. God hears the prayer of somebody who gets up after you have prayed for a job. Get up and go look. If you can't find one, create one. If you don't know how to create one, then get yourself alone with God and ask him to give you creative and inventive ideas and solutions how to find a job or to create a job. 
instead of sitting around waiting for a miracle job and whatever little pennies you have then you give it to a youth poor and call it shilo sacrifice and shilo offerings and you're still getting poor but he's still getting rich and he called himself the apostle of prosperity in a nation that is classified as the poorest nation in the world and he's been boasting on his pulpit that he's been flying a private jet for 30 years is he so dumb and so ignorant so stupid is that something for a man of god to boast in that he have a private jet and he's been flying the private jet for 30 years is that something to boast in when the roads of nigeria is wretched there's no electric city there's no running water in the nation but a pastor can stand the pulpit and boast that he have a private jet and he's been having it for 30 years. No, what you should boast about Oyedepo is that you have the best network connection in Nigeria. What you should boast in Oyedepo is that you have the best roads in Africa. What you need to boast in your pulpit, Oyedepo, is that you have the best schools in Africa. And not only your, lead, your, your members can afford, it is free to the public, just like the missionary did. That they, they see missionary in Africa uh, uh, educated you, Oyedepo. You went to school for free. You said it with your own mouth on your pulpit. Yet you open up the school, you call yourself a Christian, a man of God, you open up the school with the people money, their tithes and offering and the profit offering, their shield of sacrifice and all the sacrifices that you use their money to open schools and university, primary schools, secondary schools, that your leaders and, the, and your church members cannot afford to send their kids to school. Are you not a wicked and an evil man? And you expect God not to judge you? You expect to do this using the name of God and you, and you, and you expect no uh, uh, rebuke from God, public rebuke, humiliation, and chastisement from God. If you came in the name of your Baba Lowe or your witch doctors, that's one thing. But because you have come in the name of Jesus and you have profaned his holy name, that name will begin to judge you and shake all your kingdom till they crumble until you fall. How, how dare a man of God boast? Is that something of boasting that I have a private jet? Or I've been flying the private jet for 50 years. Is this something to boast in that he said the people in the uh, for, according to Forbes magazine that Oyedepo is ranked as the richest pastor in the world and he's worth 150 million dollars and he boasting Oyedepo boasting that it, that that can't be. I'm quoting him word for word. That can't be, that can't be. I'm worth more than Philippians 419. What is is that something to boast in? For you to boast in and say we have one of the best hospitals in Nigeria, or we have one of the best uh, clinics in Nigeria, or we have some of the best roads, or we uh, uh, or, or we a uh, winners chapel, we have built one of the best bridges and cities in, in no you can't boast in that you boast in your private jet and those who sit on you they have been so bamboozled and bushwashed and bling, uh, and brainwashed and so seduced by the spirit manifesting through you that they don't even have basic simple common sense to realize that you have bush whack them and bamboozle them all these years and you are the only person who's getting rich from your prosperity gospel your time is up the cash machine is over it has run dry god is coming and he's raising up the radicals and we're gonna get you out god is raising up his david to take down all you so-called spiritual giants in africa and the world over yes sir yes ma'am frederick said god didn't answer me until i started praying with my feet with my feet facts Frederick said, I prayed for 20 years on my knees, but God did not help me until I got up off my knees and started praying with my feet. Facts. So God ain't coming to help black folks. Jesus ain't coming. Nobody's coming for you because you only get divine help when you help yourself. That's lesson number one. We still ain't learned it. Y'all in church every Sunday, Lord, Lord, stop our kids from killing each other, Lord, stop our kids from killing each other, Lord, but why are our kids killing each other? You know why? They're angry and they're mad and they're pissed off because they broke, they ain't got no job, they've been miseducated, they go in and out of jail, and the same Negro praying to God to stop black men from killing each other is driving an $80,000 car, $400 pocketbook, $100 Timberlands, $150,000 mortgage, nails done, hair cut every week, Eating out at white restaurants every weekend. Millions of dollars on Christmas gifts. 
600 million on McDonald's every year, 2 billion on Air Jordan every year, 4 billion on alcohol and malt liquor every year, 9 billion on weave and perm, and you got the nerve to go to church and ask God to stop the black boys from killing each other. God ain't the reason they're killing each other. You the reason they killing each other. Mm -hmm. Stop praying for things you can repair and fix yourself. Mm -hmm. Facts. Come on, brother. Tell them. God don't be in these churches. For the real? Lord ain't in the church. And guess what? You shouldn't be. You should be out saving souls instead of getting them ready to die. Facts. You should be out saving souls instead of getting them ready to to die. No disrespect to the church. I'm a descendant of African Methodist Episcopal preachers. Many of the grandfathers of revolutionary pan-African nationalism were pastors of the church. Henry Highland Garnett, pastors of the church. Alexander Crummel, pastors of the church. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner. So I don't have no problem with preaching in, in church I got a problem with preachers who don't do the work. Do you know the black church was born out of the black revolutionary struggle? The black church was birthed out of black protest and struggle. What happened to it? Mm -hmm. What happened to it? Mm -hmm. What happened to it? My Muslim brothers was one of the hadith of Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. Peace be upon him. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, black man from Arabia, said even work is a form of worship. Sorry. Muhammad said work is a form of worship. So you want to go to the mosque and keep praying all day, but the prophet of your religion said work is a worship. So why your ass ain't in the neighborhood working? Mm -hmm. Working. Mm -hmm. I live in Philadelphia. Millions of Muslims more than any city in America. Where the jobs at? Where the schools at, Aki? That long beard don't impress me. What is you doing for our people? 